So I'm thinking of taking this anthurium out of the cabinet because it's getting kind of bleached from the grow light. It's fairly close and anthuriums tend to thrive in deep shade. Let's actually test the light to see what exactly it's getting. It's getting about, it's getting over 800 foot candles. That is high light. And uh, yeah, a little too bright for these dark moody anthuriums. This is, by the way, Luxurians and Carla Blackie crossed together. So yeah, as you can see, it's doing well, it's growing, it has two growth points, but it's not looking so hot. So I think we're gonna take this out and pot it up. Um, I don't really have any space to put it anywhere else, so I think I'm actually gonna pot this up and put it in my grow tent and see what happens. So let's take him off the wall. Oh, got him. Well, lost a little bit. Oh wait, did he have a third growth point? I think he had a third growth point that just didn't really do anything. <laughs> well, you know what, I'll pop this up and see if it does anything. Because it has some roots and a little stem, so you never know. But yeah, look at that guy. So clearly very healthy. If I can show you right there. Yeah, clearly very healthy. So let's just get him into his own little pot and put him in a little bit lower light <laughs> so he doesn't crisp up. And these leaves, these leaves should be quite dark. It's Lux and Carla. So they shouldn't be this light green. They should be a nice moody dark color. So let's make that happen. I want to show you guys real quick on my phone. Here's an anthurium that I think is ready to cut, to be honest. I can cut it into two pieces. That's one thing I love about the terrarium cabinet is that it's so easy to take propagation. So we're going to do that right now. And there it is, guys. Look at all those roots. So I'm just going to take this and pot it up. So here we go. The cut area is above the substrate, so it can catalyst over and won't rot. And because the roots are very exposed like this, I am literally just gonna put it right back in the terrarium to let it root out in here. And then I'll take it out of here and move it to a slightly bigger pot. I would say now is a good time to repaint this windowsill here. I've repainted it a couple of times in the past, but you know, as I water things and water spills on here and stuff, and I scrape things along, I think this is wood or something. Yeah, I think it's time to repaint this. Make it look nice and new again. All right, let's do it.
So now I am going to be repotting, or not repotting, but up-potting all of these little Anthurium vitarifoliums. I grew these from seed. They were given to me by a friend, so I'm very excited. Look how big. Let's see what the biggest one is. That, I think, is the biggest one right there. Let me do a close-up real quick. Oh, oh. Does it want to focus? Can it focus? Can it focus? Can it focus on? Can it focus on? I gotta say, they're kind of cute though, hanging like this. They're just hanging in my grow tent like this. I could just hang them up like this and they're kind of cute. Now nah, they look like grass, fuck that. So I'm gonna put these in little pots so that I can sell them off. All right, here we go. So, some fun stuff just came in the mail. These guys right here that I got off of Amazon, they are these little vases. They're actually jars, as you can see there. They got a nice little wooden top, but I looked at these and thought this would make a really nice vessel for my no drainage system, because I got some plants that I could fit right in here. So you know what? We're gonna do some repottings. So what I'm gonna repot today is this really nice Anthurium Bessier AF. So I took off most of the moss of the root system. You don't have to do this. The reason I did this is because I actually wanted to try to fit it into this, but looking at this root system, I'm not gonna be able to do that because yeah, it needs a lot more room than that. Most of the time though, you would just take it right out of the pot, put it into a pot just a little bit bigger and without even touching the root system, don't need to break it up or nothing. You just fill in the empty spaces with substrate of your choice. You know what I'm saying? So whether it's moss, whether it's aeroid mix or whatever. So, but I'm going to have to use something a little bit wider. So I'm thinking this right here instead. So, I'm going to take out some of this moss. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to put a little bit more in to compensate. Yeah, just like, uh, just an inch or so. Now, a nice little trick that I do, when you have long roots like this, you have short roots up here, you don't want to just put it down and press it down because you might break the roots. So something that you could do is just tuck all those long roots in and then just what I like to call swirly whirly it in. Swirly whirly and then tucky wucky as you swirly whirly down. And then the roots will wrap around and they'll be on the sides of the pot as they grow and you'll be able to see them. There's a dead one, I'm gonna get rid of that. Ooh. Oh, oh wait. It made like a sound. Did you hear that? It made a sound. I can't make it now. <laughs> I can't make it again. But did you hear that? It was like a bong. <laughs> what note was that? Oh, what note is that? I don't know. As a singer, I should know, but I don't have perfect pitch. All right, that looks to be just about perfect, guys. Now, he is a little bit crowded in here. Ideally, I would have done one pot size up, but you know what? As long as he establishes in here, I can always just take him right out and put him into something a little bit bigger in a month or two. And what I like about these pots, or these vessels I should say, I call them pots, is because they don't have a lip. You know, I like to use the jars for aesthetic reasons, but the jars have the lip, so I usually have to break the jar, and then the jar I obviously can't use anymore. But these I like because they don't have a lip, they're completely cylindrical, that's the word, right? They're cylinders. <laughs> So basically, you can just pull it right out and it's just fine. The roots are going to stay exactly where they are. Whereas if you have a lip, you're going to tug, 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 but the roots are going to be wrapped around. They're not going to be able to come out without breaking them. So you got to break the glass. So we don't have to do it with this guy. So I feel just fine putting him right back in. And I didn't break really any roots, so I'm actually just going to reuse this. 
this is going to be semi-temporary, um, just for like maybe a month or two, and then as he grows into this, I'm just going to take him out and then very swiftly put him into a larger one. But I don't want him to be dwarfed by a giant uh, glass vessel just yet, because he only has two leaves, so let's just do this for now. Now a little trick I like to do to fill in those gaps, because you don't want any of these air gaps, lest the roots dry up too quickly. And then rot away and introduce root rot to your plant. So my little trick here is I'm gonna take a brush or like a little stick, nothing too sharp, you don't wanna damage the roots, but you just, you just tucky-wucky, you just tucky-wucky guys and get all those little strands of moss into those gaps. And just take your time doing this. You see, just like that, I can't get into those small air pockets with my fingers, so the paintbrush will do that for me. And as you can see, I am not pressing down and squeezing the moss in there. We want there to be aeration in there. The moss is just kind of tucking in the root. The roots are just kind of tucked in. You know, like if I were to put my, my fingers in there, you see how there's still a little bit of like fluff to it, like a nice little pillow? You don't want to like press it down so that they suffocate all the roots and take out all the oxygen that can flow through this substrate. That's what we want, that's the whole point. And there we go, people. So now that one is done. Okay, guys, right here we have Anthurium Voodoo Child, which is a hybrid of Dresslary and Regale. And I am going to take him out real quick just to show you that there is a new leaf coming in doing the very infamous inchworm dance. <laughs> which basically means the stem of the leaf is growing faster than the leaf has yet to pop out of the caterpillar, as you can see from the previous leaf. Now there are a lot of tips and tricks out there, little hacks on how you can get these guys to pop out of their sheath, but I'm gonna tell you the only way to do this. The only way, this is the foolproof way to get these guys to pop out without damaging the leaf. And I'm gonna show you right here. So pay close attention, what I'm going to do it requires a lot of skill, and I've been doing this for a long time and I have perfected this. So you might not get it right the first time, but let me just show you my secret trick on how to get these guys to pop out unscarred and unscathed every time. Ready? Watch. Did you catch that? Wait, let me, let me, let me do that again, okay? Again, this takes a lot of skill. It, guys all you do is just take some water and just spray it down to lubricate it these things grow in the rainforest they're constantly wet they're constantly getting lubricated so that's what you do you are playing the rain people and that's what you're doing right there and what you're gonna do you're not gonna touch that thing hey, no I see, I see you, don't do it, don't do it. You probably have one of your plants like, oh, if I just take a little cotton swab and just, no. Oh, if I just, you know, if I just open up the sheath with my fingertip, no. Don't touch it. You touch it, you scratch it, you put a scar on it, and then as the leaf fills out, it's gonna get bigger and bigger, and you're gonna hate yourself when that beautiful leaf opens up and there's a big old blemish right there, okay? Now, this is the leaf that I got it with, so I didn't do this, but, this leaf is gonna come out beautifully because I ain't touching it, I'm just spraying it. And you know what? When it gets to this point here, just spray it two, three times, once a day until it pops out. Mark my words, that's all you do. And then you put it right back and forget about it. Did you hear me? Hey, d I'll spray you. All right guys, so I wanted to show you something really funny. Uh, I packaged up a little Mr. Triangle Boy for a trade. I'm trading it for a Black Velvet Eastern Panama, which I'm really, really excited about. That's been on my wish list for quite a while. But <laughs> basically, the guy was like, 
oh, maybe UPS is not going to take USPS shipping boxes. And I, just, I didn't want to buy new boxes. So I was like, what if I just tape up the box so they'll never know it was a USPS box? And he was like, I mean, I guess that would work. So, and then he said, and just tell me where to open the box. So when it comes, I know where to open it. And so this is what I made. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't look suspicious at all. <laughs> this is my first plant I'm shipping ever, guys. I'm so nervous. But I mean, he's in there, but good. So I'm gonna go take him to UPS right now and I'll catch you guys later. So it's been a couple of days since I shipped out my little Mr. Triangle for my trade and my box just came. So let's open her up. He gave me a little bit of coaching when it comes to packaging plants. So gotta also thank him for that because I was like, oh, okay, how do I package this thing up? I always say that the harder it is to open your package, the better it was packaged. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Oh, there's a little baby. There he is. This has been a wish list plant of mine for quite a while. I, I don't have a lot of plants on my wish list these days. It's not a very long list these days, but I am very, very happy that I was able to get him and not spend any money on him. So what I'm gonna do is take my little cup no drainage holes, that is how I do things around here. I'm gonna put in about like half an inch or an inch or so at most of fluval stratum for the free draining base. Because even though I don't have drainage holes, you always had to have drainage. There we go, just like that. We're gonna take him out and see what the roots are. Roots look pretty dang good. Yeah, this is great. This is awesome. Okay, we're gonna use some fresh moss, people, just to be safe. I'm going to put a little base at the bottom just so that the roots have something to sit on. All right, he's got quite a bit of roots there. That's really, really good. I'm just gonna double check for any rot that may have happened in the mail, and it looks pretty good. All right, looks better than pretty good, actually. Oh, I hope he does okay. I hope he's not a bitch. Because <laughs> sometimes species and anthuriums can be a bitch. One thing that I've learned when it comes to anthurium seedlings is that they will continue to grow up and grow roots out for quite a bit until they get past their seedling stage, essentially. So it's a good idea, something I recommend, to pot it a little bit low into your pot, into its vessel, whatever it is planted in, so that over time you can add some substrate, add some more moss, because they're gonna keep growing up a little bit more. Almost done. Oh, he's adorable. He was only in the mail for two days, by the way, so it's not like he was in the mail for a week. Anthuriums, you know, they, they can survive in the mail for a week. They, they, they do pretty well, but a seedling like this couldn't take the chance. And let's see, there it is. There's my little man. <laughs> I'm very happy, can you tell? All right, and I can probably reuse this moss. I'll just boil it and uh, put it in my container with my other used moss. You can reuse moss, you just gotta boil it and take out anything organic. So like, make sure there's no dead roots in there, nothing like that. If a plant like rotted and died in the moss, then you might as well just throw it out. But if you're just repotting a plant and you have a whole bunch of moss, I mean, cause moss is expensive guys, you might as well just reuse it. I'm so happy. Look at that's like a, per that's a. <sighs> Ugh, I hate it. I hate it. So here I have a plant that is quite odd and interesting. It's. Ace of Spades crossed with Portolet, but more specifically the Hawaiian version of Ace of Spades or the Novelty G Ace of Spades, which actually has no direct relation to the true authentic Ace of Spades. Um, for those of you who are interested, I made a whole video on the history of Ace of Spades and go check that out. But um, yeah, so their Ace of Spades, which is something that looks like an ace of spades, but it's not quite the ace of spades. It, it, it's a little bit different. Crossed with an Indonesian portale. 
and I got this, I think back in June, and it's the beginning of fall now as I'm recording this. It's still pretty juvenile, if I can just show you up close. It's really clumping up. It's putting out so many offsets. But you know what's really crazy is that, look at this, this leaf right there. That leaf in the middle, where my nose is, <laughs> that leaf is like still coming out. It's still new. And then it's putting out another leaf. What? That is so strange. So yeah, it's growing very oddly, but uh, I guess that's a good problem. <laughs> so I'm going to be dividing this into at least, I think at least three plants, because there's two offsets. Okay, so I'm going to take this guy out of his little vasey vase. Okay, there we go. Now let's tickle this little root system and let's very gently get this uh, mossy moss off. And we'll take a look. So yeah, that's very strange. I was always under the impression that plants that were tissue cultured had a clumping habit or like a super vigorous offsetting habit. So I don't know if the Novelty GAOS has been tissue cultured. Um, I don't really know the history behind that. All I know is that it's not directly related to the real Ace of Spades. It's technically a dupe Ace of Spades, but it's still an honorable mention and it still retains a good value because people buy it and people like it because it's a very beautiful plant. But let's take a look at this root system. It's quite healthy. Oh my goodness. Okay. So let's see here. Now where can I take a cut? So, so I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to show you. So yeah, there's the first one right there. The leaf wasn't like fully done, but it's fine. And it has one little root there. That should be good enough. We'll see. It's got like a 50-50% chance of making it. And then let's get that other one. Because, yeah, I'm wondering if the offsets are making the main plant do, like, this weird stuff. Like, it doesn't know where to put its energy. Um, but let's take this other one off if we can. So it looks like this one also has just one root cyst, or just one root to work with. Which is fine. Oh my god, there's another offshoot coming. There's another one. Here's one. So here is the second one. There is the leaf right there. There's the root. And when I tell you guys, this thing just keeps offsetting right. Do you see where my finger is right there? There's literally a new shoot coming. So you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking maybe we should just cut it. Let's cut the top off. Because the top has all these roots. And there's another shoot coming from here. Oh my god, this is insane. This has so many roots. You know, the guy that sold me this said it does offset like crazy. I was like, okay, he's just telling me that to try to sell his plant. I was like, okay, you know. Sometimes people stretch the truth a little bit. Say, oh yeah, it's, it's such a great grower. He was not lying, so. <laughs> he was not stretching the truth one bit. So we're going to cut just above that growth point. And it looks like there's going to be plenty just plenty of root to work with. I haven't heard or felt any snapping. Let's try to keep it that way. I get nervous when roots snap or break or crack or anything because then they become exposed to rot and disease and fungal outbreaks and things and that can end up killing your plant. So I get a little bit nervous, but usually if the plant is healthy, then we're good. See, so yeah, guys, look at there's There's the quote unquote top cut. Look at that. Look at all those roots we're working with, guys. That is insane. And there's a growth point. Oh my god, guys. There's a growth point right there where my middle finger is. Right there. Another growth point. Holy crap. That is... That's ridiculous. That is a little bit ridiculous. And then we have the main... Technically the mother plant, I guess you could say. Right here. <laughs> my god. So yeah, look at this right here. It's the offset coming out of the main plant. Oh my God, this was under the root system. 
or under the substrate. That's why it's white. It hasn't had a chance to photosynthesize just yet. Wow, that is insane. So we've got one, two, three, four plants. Interesting. <laughs> so let's pot up the small ones first. And we're, we're just gonna pot them up in these cups here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, actually wait, where's my cinnamon? I need my cinnamon. Where is the cinnamon? Here it is. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to put a little pile there. I'm gonna take my brush. Let's see if I can get this to work. Take the brush and just brush it on the open wound right there. And because the wound is still wet, because of the tissue juices and whatnot, and the water inside the plant flowing out like the way we bleed when we get a cut, the cinnamon will just kind of stick onto it. Okay, so let's start with the smallest one, I guess. Oh! Guys, I literally just bought a mat, and I'm like, mm, let me not use it. <laughs> because I thought this would be big enough, but apparently it's not. So we're going to get the base right there, and then we're gonna take our cutting. And what I like to do is I like to take my cutting and put it kind of on the side so that the roots, it is only one or two roots, so that the root right there, if you can see it, where my finger is, it's against the side so I can keep an eye on it. I can see if it's growing, I can see if it's doing its thing, and all that good stuff. And I'm going to try to keep the open wound area above the substrate so that I can callus over and not get any fungal or root rot or anything like that. All right, and let's wet it so that it stays nice and hydrated. Honestly, guys, when it comes to moss, even if it feels moist, it's probably not moist enough. It's a weird thing, but I find that to be the case. I find that roots of some of my anthuriums or even uh, philodendrons, they'll dry out. But I'm like, but the moss felt moist-ish. Like, not wet, but moist, like not dry. So I was like, what the heck? So yeah, I think moss should be a little bit wetter than you might think. I don't know. Well, there, there's one, anyway. And uh, we're gonna get number two here. And you know what, I'm wondering, because I have the tree fern here, what if I do an experiment? What if I grow one in moss? What if I grow this one in like tree fern? And like, let's see. Should we do an experiment, guys? We have them to spare. We have plants to spare, so I might as well. Because tree fern is great for seedlings, but I don't see a lot of people growing mature anthuriums in tree fern, so unless I'm just not looking in the right place and maybe you guys like to, hey, what are you talking about? Everyone who grows in tree fern these days. Well, maybe they are and I'm just not seeing it. But if they're not, we're gonna figure it out right now if we can grow these long term in tree fern. I would say that tree fern dries out much quicker than moss. It's a lot more free draining, I will say that. So I feel like you have to be more on top of your watering if you're using tree fern compared to moss. Okay, and I can see the, the root tip. That's what I wanna see. Let me just make sure that the base is covered so that the base of the root doesn't dry out for being too exposed. And let's wet our plants. I really need to like, I'm gonna actually clip this off or like pinch this off, this other growth point. You know, we don't need all these crazy growth points happening everywhere. It's a little bit nuts. It's a little bit nuts though. Okay, let's take some of this cinnamon and just paint it onto those open wounds. And I have to say, I'm very happy when uh, I get comments saying that um, my videos have helped you guys with your anthuriums or made you more confident in starting anthuriums. I think that's great. So I'm very, very happy that my content, my messy ass content is out there in the world doing good things. Even at this very small, what am I trying to say? 
even though my, uh, Jake, what are you trying to say? Even though my YouTube channel is small, well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> even at this small stage, maybe is what I meant to say? I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Let's wet that moss, wet that moss. Oh yeah, wet it, wet it, wet it, wet it, wet it. Wet it, wet it, wet it, wet it, wet it, wet it, wet wet, 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 that moss, you wet that moss. Wet the moss, wet the moss, moss wet. Wet that moss and the moss is wet. The moss is wet because I wet that moss. I wet that moss and the moss is wet. Wet, wet, wet is wet. Wet is wet and the moss is wet. The moss is moss and the moss is wet and the moss is wet when the wet is wet. Okay. I'll never be a rapper. Yeah, this thing is going gangbusters. Holy! All right. Taking out the trash, taking out the trash. Guys, I, I'm still, for any of you who have been watching uh, my videos for a little bit, I'm sort of trying to figure out what content people like. And I feel like people like my narration videos. So I'll definitely be doing more of those. Um, I like doing the vloggy videos, but those videos usually don't do as well. And I think the reason for that is because just every plant YouTuber does vlogging videos. So it's kind of like been there, done that. How many vlogging videos, how many plant chore videos do people really need to see? Um, so I can understand why those might not be doing that well. So let me know in the comments what you would like to see from me going forward. Or maybe like what you want to see more of. Um... Yeah, because I kind of stayed away from the here are my top 10 plants of the month and here are my like top 10 you, you know like those like top 10 videos or whatever with, with like a different theme I just feel like I don't know they're kind of repetitive but if you guys want to see that from me let me know um if you want to see something else from me let me know um let me know what kind of content you're looking for I would like my content to be somewhat refreshing I don't just want to be the same old crap that you see on YouTube you know, so like my narration videos, you don't see a whole lot of those. Pretty and Green does some really, really good ones. Um, he does more like plant drama videos, which I love. So I'm not going to try to overlap with him. But like history or backstory of a really famous or popular houseplant, Aeroid, Anthurium that people love. And I haven't seen a really good video on it out there. I'll make those videos for sure if people like them. Uh, my Anthurium videos do very well. My Anthurium Care video uh, continues to be my most popular video. That's gotten, at, I think, like 20,000 views. And for me, that's a lot. For me, that's like going mini viral. Because <laughs> I don't promote my, my content. I don't pay for, uh, you know, advertisements. I don't do any of that stuff. This entire weekend is just gloomy and doomy and sloomy and, and droomy and all those umies. And my whole body was aching yesterday. I guess because of the atmospheric pressure changes or whatever. I don't know, but I, I've heard about that. Um, I've, I've never really had those kind of issues when, on rainy days, but yesterday, whoo! I, I had done some weight training the day before though, so two days ago. Um, so maybe it was like a combination of my body recovering from that on top of the pressure change. I don't know. I'm not an expert on the human body or the weather. And I hate those days. I hate when I feel like I want to do stuff. I, I, you know, I don't want a day to go to waste. But then you just have those days where it's like, oh, I just can't, I can't do anything. No matter how hard you try. And sometimes you just got to throw in the towel and be like, all right, well... I just gotta do the bare minimum today, and that's just how it's gonna go, because my body and mind will not let me do anything else. And you just try again the next day. And thankfully I work from home and I create my own schedule, so I can afford to do that. Not everyone can. Sometimes you gotta get up at the crack of dawn and go straight to work, nine to five, just to stay alive. I used to do that, never again if I can help it. But um, we're all just here doing what we can. I don't know why we say that. You ever like go off on a tangent like I just did or or somebody and then they just kind of end it. They don't know how to end it. So they just end it with like a generic phrase like, well, we're all just trying to 
go along to get along, or well, you know, like two peas in a pod don't dip that up, put the book, but that, but but and like it's what? Why do we do that? That's a weird thing. Has anyone else noticed that when we don't know how to end like a tangent or like a long run on sentence, we're just like we just end it with a generic phrase like oh well, well what can you do or you know da, da, da. I don't know. I've noticed that. Has anyone else noticed that? So yeah, there he is, looking cute. That is so weird though, because this leaf as well, right there, that leaf had not finished hardening off when the new leaf, this one was coming in. So yeah, I, I'm really hoping that these leaves start sizing, ooh. <laughs> I really hope that these leaves, because this leaf is a little bit smaller than that one, I hope these leaves start sizing up more. So I'm going to be cutting out the offsets like these and I'll grow them out a little bit and I'll sell them off or maybe I'll put one in the terrarium, I don't know, we'll see. All right, now how big is this guy? He's kind of wide. I should get, yeah, because these are gonna be too narrow, so I should get another pot for him. I do drainage or no drainage. Let's, let's see how this how this looks in here. I mean that fits pretty much perfectly. Or I can do this and have like a little base, I guess. I don't know. You know maybe I'll, maybe I'll do this. I'll do this and I'll put the old substrate back in, provided I don't see any dead roots or anything in there. Or not dead roots, or dead roots or like if I plucked off a root like that one by accident. Oopsie. Okay, so let's put that in there. I also, as of recording this, at this point when I release it, it will have been done. But right now I have an auction going on for a clone, which basically means like a propagation. Like, so this is a clone of this, and this is a clone of that. Um, I have a clone up for auction on one of the Facebook groups of my Mr. Triangle Boy. Uh, I featured him in my Delta Force video from like last year, and I featured him a lot on my Instagram. And people love that wide sinus, and I think right now the top bid is like $360. For a small plant, I'm like, oh my goodness. So I'm very, very happy about that. So I can use that money to buy another wishlist plant. By the way, guys, I'm not just blowing through my money, I am putting most of it away. The majority of it I put back into my savings, which is so great because when you're self-employed and you have to essentially keep track of the taxes that you owe, I've had like zero in my bank account for like over a year because it was all going into my tax account, which is like a second savings account, but for my tax money that I have to pay in April. So I, I look in one of my accounts and it has like thousands of dollars and I'm like, oh, -hoo! But it's not mine. But then I look into my real savings account and it's just, it's just so sad. So now I finally have money back in there and I can use that for music videos. I can use that for mixing and mastering my songs. I can use that for plants. I can use that for new equipment, all that stuff, you know? And just some rainy day money, you know? Just some, some, what am I trying to say? Some uh, security money? No, wait, just like, what do you call it when you you need money to feel secure? Like a, like a pillow, like a cushion? Like just in case you run into some unforeseen expenses? I don't know. I think you get what I'm trying to say. Listen to what I'm thinking and you'll understand me perfectly. Okay, so there he is. I think that was the original leaf that I got it with. <laughs> That's how big it was. That is, this, this guy is just so hilarious. He's so weird. You really need to like focus on one leaf at a time because this is, kind of unacceptable. <laughs> this is quite strange. Like finish one leaf before you start putting out another one. And you know what, I'm thinking the next time it does this, if it's not finished putting out a new leaf, like like emerging and hardening off, 
and it starts putting out a new one, I think I'm just going to pluck it off because I, I don't want it to try to... It's like tripping over its own feet. It's like trying too fast. I've never had an Ethereum do this. Have any of you had an Ethereum do this where they put out a leaf and before it has time to fully emerge and, and fill out with water and grow, a new one is already coming in on the same growth point? On the same growth point, guys, not a different growth point. Not I, because I already cut off all the growth points. This is from the same growth point. This leaf is still trying to come in, but then a new one's coming in right, right behind it. It's insane. It's ridiculous. You know what? I'm gonna like. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm gonna prune him because this is weird. So I'm going to take that leaf off. I'm gonna let this leaf grow out, and then you know this leaf looks good enough. And this leaf, it's a little bit yellow, but it, it's fine for now. So it doesn't make me mad. So. So I'll just, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try to figure out what these guys' deal is. <laughs> All right, let's take out the real trash now. Let's take out the trash. Where? Oh, there it is. By the way, guys, I have to have the Roborock vacuum go daily. <laughs> My little pet robot vacuum cleaner, he's got to go daily to mop the floor because, you know, when you have all this substrate just on the frickin' floor, uh, your feet are going to look very ugly and, and dark and disgusting. And I don't want to get that athlete's foot or whatever that is, or anything else. So, yeah. And I just don't want my floors to be dirty and, and gross. Say, so even though I have an indoor garden, basically, I still get down and dirty. And I, it, it, you would think I'm working in an actual garden. The, the way I get so dirty. I don't know how I get so dirty. Hey Siri, start cleaning. 